So let's continue with the math section in Strivers A to Z DSA course. So before that, hey, we welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is prime factorization of a number. But it will be a query based problem. Before uh, getting into this problem statement, there is a small prerequisite. Please go back and watch my video on printing prime factors of a number. What do I mean by that? If I give you n equal to 60, I will have to divide it with the smallest prime, that is 2. And then you get 30. Again, smallest prime, 15. For 15, the smallest prime is 3. So, you'll get 5. So, the prime factors for 60 are 2, 3, 5. We've already done this problem. Go back and watch it. This will be the code for this one, where you take an empty list. You start from 2 because that is the smallest prime. Then you go till square root of n. Then if i is dividing n, you keep on dividing it and you add it to the list of prime factors. And eventually, if n is greater than 1, that means there is this element left. You add it and then you return the list. I've already done this in my previous video. Please go back and watch it. So, how is this problem different? Over here, You'll be given a lot of queries. Imagine I give you Q equal to 3 and the first number. So there will be 3 numbers given to you. First one, let's assume 12, then 16 and then 60. So when I give you 12, you don't have to print uh, the prime factors. Instead, you take 12 and if you divide it with the smallest prime factor, you get 6. Again with the smallest, you get 3. So it's 2, 2, 3. That's what you'll have to return me. 2, 2, 3. This is what I want in the sorted order, the correct order. For 16, it will be 2, 2, 2, 2. For 60, if I do it, that's going to be, yeah, 2, 2, I think 3, 5, yes. So I'm not returning the prime factors. Instead, it is factorization where there is duplicacy. Got it? So what will be the naive solution? The naive solution will be to use this print prime factors and maybe convert this into printing prime factorization. Maybe reuse this. How can I do it? Over here, I'm adding it only if it is dividing. And then, then I'm keeping on dividing it again and again. Can I, instead of adding it here, can I add it here? list dot add the number of time it divides i'll add it to the factorization makes sense apart from this everything will be similar now what do i have i have a lot of queries maybe i can simply say okay function it's going to give me a list of integers assume it's going to give you a list of integers all the queries are there can i say i can straight away iterate over the queries which can be i equal to 0 and maybe let's say queries dot size. I'll iterate over the entire queries. And I know one thing that if I call print or maybe you can call it as get prime factorization. You can call it as get and I can write it as get prime factorization and I can pass on the number which is queries of i done and then I can simply print the list depending on the language you're using you can iterate through the list you can print it if you're using python if you can straight away print it as well on java you have to iterate on c++ you have to iterate I'll leave that to you if I do this this will be printing down all the prime factors for sure but what will be the time complexity I'm definitely using a, a big of q over here a big of Q where I'm iterating over all the queries. And over here, for sure, the time complexity is big O of square root of n in the worst possible scenario. Imagine I give you a number like 17, which is a prime itself. So none of the integers will divide it. And eventually, this is where you add it. Because for 17, the number itself is the prime factor. So... It will not divide it. So eventually, at the worst possible scenario, it will run till square root of n. So can I say, 
the time complexity will be b go of q into b go of square root of n right and this is where uh, the interviewer will not be happy and he'll ask you to optimize this so in order to optimize let's analyze what is taking time b go of q that is to run through each and every query i cannot do anything to this that means you're left out with this one i need to optimize b go of square root of n now why is it taking b go of square root of n because when i'm trying to prime factorize 17 and go going from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 and going on i'm running the loop and that is taking time so i have to optimize this loop if someone can directly tell me okay for 17 the smallest prime factor that divides 17 is 17 itself for 25 if the number is 25 if someone can tell me the smallest prime factor that divides 25 is 5 itself I'm pretty good because for 25 I'll have to iterate from 2 then 3 then 4 and then I reach 5 so I'm saving a lot of time so I'll have to do some pre-computations in order to pre-compute, I'll be using something as SPF, that is smallest prime factor. Just a quick disclaimer. Before this, please go back and watch my video on sieve of Erastrosthenes. That will be the prerequisite for this one. So, assume that you're given a lot of queries according to the problem statement. So, we'll be given a lot of integers. In a real-world scenario, the integers can be till 10 to the power 5. In order to explain you the problem, I'll take n till 30. I'll take n till 30. Okay. So, if I'm taking n till 30, I'll be declaring an SPF array of 31 size. And if it is of 31 size, the first index will be 0 and the last index will be 30. And I know that the first prime number is 2. So, I'll start writing the indexing from 2. Let's skip 0 and 1. In the array, there is 0 and 1 when I'm skipping to explain you. And the last one is 30. To start off, what you'll do is, you'll declare an array and then at every index, you assign the numbers itself. If you look at 22, it has 22. Every index should have the index number. Done and dusted. Now, what is the first step of Sieve algorithm? It starts with the first number 2 and checks if it is prime or not. How do you check if it is prime or not? Over here, if the index is containing the number itself, 2 contains 2, that means it is prime. Got it? Okay. What did we do in case of C? We started iterating for the multiples. 4, 6, 8, until 30. And we marked them as false in C. Remember? Over here, I'll do slightly different. I'll mark them as 2. I'll mark them as 2. Perfect. So once you have marked everything as 2, all the multiples as 2, you move to the next number. And what is the next number? That's 3. Let's move to 3. Again, we'll do the same thing. For 3, is it a prime? How do you know? 3 is filled with 3. It is a prime. So you start with the first multiple. 6. Do you start with 6? No. We did optimizations. We started with 3 into 3, which is 9, because 3 into 2 is already done by 2 into 3. Got it? So we start with 9. So we go to 9 and we mark it as 3. Then there is 3 into 4 which is 12. At the moment we go to 12, we see that, okay, it's already marked with a number other than 12, which is 2. It's already marked. If it is already marked, that means 12 got a prime factor smaller than 3. So it is marking it. And I'm looking for smallest. So you do not, you don't, Overwrite with 3 because you're looking for smallest. Perfect. What is the next? 15 will be marked. Next, 18 will not be marked. Next, 21 will be marked. Next, 24 will not be marked. Next, 27 will be marked. 3 is also done. What's the next one? 4. Is 4 prime? No. Because 4 has 2. It is not a prime. Next, 5. Okay, for 5. My bad. For 5, you start with the first number which is 5 into 5, 25. Because 5 into 2, 5 into 3, 5 into 4 is done. What's the value 25? Okay, let's go over there and mark it as 5. Done. None. Okay. Do I go for the next 6? We do not. Because 6 into 6 will be exceeding 30. And we just require till 30. Optimizations and see if 
done. Once you have done this, SPF is ready. I'll give you a small number. Let's take uh, 30 for that reason. Now, in order to figure out which is the smallest number that divides 30, you look at 30, you get the value 2. You get the value 2. Pick it up. Divide. Okay. Next, left out with 15. You want to divide 15 with the smallest prime factor. Go to 15 and it will tell you 3. Divide it. Next, upper 15, if you divide it, it will be 5. There's 5. You go to 5 and there's a 5. So you divide it with 5 and then you reach 1. So whenever you reach 1, you stop then and there. So you got it. Super simple. If I give you 17, okay, I don't have to loop from 2, 3, 4. You straight away go to 17 and it gives you 17. Okay, interesting. Bingo of 1. Let's give you 25. You don't have to loop till 2, 3, 4. You go to 25 and it tells you there's 5. And then there's 5. It also tells you 5. Done. Two steps. And the maximum it can take is if the number is 16. Like power of 2. If the number is power of 2, then it will take the maximum time because for 16, it is storing 2. Okay. That'll be 8, 2, 2, 2, and then 2, 1. For 16, it will be taking logarithmic base 2 of 16. Logarithmic base 2. So the time complexity in order to find the prime factorization, once you have the SPF, once you have the SPF, will be logarithmic base to n in the worst possible scenario if all the smallest prime factors are 2. But in case of bigger, smaller prime factors, it will take lesser time, lesser time. So this is the worst possible case scenario if you're dividing it by 2, 2, 2, 2. And it takes logarithmic base to n. Got it? I'll write the code. Then I'll be explaining you the time complexity in depth. So assume you're given the function where you'll be given a list of integer and queries. List of integer of queries rather. Okay, what is the first step? I'm assuming that the constraints are stating that the maximum number will be 10 to the power 5. So what you do is, you declare an SPF of 10 to the power 5 plus 1. Yes, that's what you do. And initially what you can do is SPF of 1 or maybe you can just start looping from 1. That's the simplest thing you can do. For i equal to 1 and you can go till 10 to the power 5 and you can say SPF i will be i. Done. The first step is completed. Now what is the next step? I iterate from 2 to the simple one, the sieve step. i equal to 2 and it will be like i into i and we know the number is 10 to the power 5 so i plus plus. Perfect. What is my next step? I check if it is prime or not in order to mark multiples and see if, okay? If it is prime, so SPF of i should be equal to equal to y, then only it's prime, we know it, okay? What is the next step? We start from multiples. I'm doing a same sieve, i into i, and that goes to j lesser than 10 to the power 5, and j equal to j plus i, quite simple. What do we do? We say, okay, we're going to mark these multiples, but be very careful. Only if SPF is previously not marked. Sorry, is previously not marked, which means it should be equal to equal to J. If that J index is J itself, then you go ahead and say SPF of J, hey, the smallest prime factor is I. You complete the for loop, you complete the if loop, you again complete the outer for loop. So you have the pre-computations ready. I have the pre-computations ready. Okay, perfect. What is my next job? My next job is to go through each and every query. Okay, so let's go through each and every query. So for i equal to, let's say, 0 till query size. Let's assume the number is queries of i. That's our number. I need to print the prime factorization. How can I do it? I'll be like, okay, while n is not equal to 1. Perfect. And uh, if n is 1, it cannot have prime factorization. Uh, so, assuming all the numbers will be minimum 2. Minimum 2 and add a maximum of 10 to the power 5. What do we do? We say, okay, what is the first prime factor? I know one thing. The first 
prime factor of that n will be SPF of n itself. That's the smallest number that divides n. Print. And then you reduce the number by that smallest number that divides it. And you keep on doing this till n becomes 1. Done. What is the time complexity? We know one thing. That the scene takes n logarithmic of log of n. We're assuming n is 10 to the power 5 because that is the maximum you can get. Okay, perfect. I can compute the preset. And what about this one? Okay, that's taking big O of Q and doing something like division, division, division. And we saw that the worst possible scenario can be logarithmic base to n. So the overall time complexity will be n log of log n plus Q into logarithmic base to n. And what will be the space complexity? I'm using a big O of n which is 10 to the power 5 in order to pre-compute the SPF which is the smallest prime factor. So SPF is something that helps you to get the smallest prime factor of any number. And this is derived from the Sieb algorithm. I hope you understood it. So I'll be finishing off the function and this is the pseudo code. Again, you can find the C++, Java, Python or JavaScript code given below. Make sure you check them out and I hope you understood everything. And if that is the case, uh, please, please do consider giving us a like. I will to our channel. Please, please do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's finish some of the video. Till then, bye. Take care. Spoken.